Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will talk about the ETFs and arbitrage trading strategies. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Wojtko and I'm CEO and Head of Research in Quantpedia. Today I would like to discuss arbitrage strategies that are related to ETFs. Uh, but firstly, let's go through the definition of the terms. So what is the exchange traded fund and what is uh, the arbitrage? So firstly, exchange traded funds. So exchange traded fund is a type of investment fund that is traded on the stock exchange. Uh, so they are in many ways similar to mutual funds, except that ETFs are bought and sold from the owners throughout the day on stock exchanges. What are the advantages? The ETFs can hold a lot of financial assets, stocks, bonds, currencies, futures, commodities, gold bars, etc. Et Most of ETFs are index funds, so they have some strategy and they replicate some index or some predefined strategy. And ETF generally operates with an arbitrage mechanism that's designed to keep it trading close to the net asset value. We will discuss some of the arbitrage strategies that are related to ETFs. I will show you how do they work. So what is the arbitrage? The arbitrage is the simultaneous uh, purchase and the sale of the same or similar assets in different markets uh, in order to profit from tiny differences in the assets listed price. So it means there is no difference between the similar assets. We can buy the one which is the underpriced and we can sell the one which is the over Priced and we can try to earn the difference in the prices. There are a lot of arbitrage strategies in Quantpedia. We have over 30 of them that are not just to ETFs but to stocks, commodities, uh, futures, etc. 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 I will discuss three blog posts that are related to ETFs. So, firstly, what we can do is we can utilize anticipated ETF rebalances. So, as I mentioned before, ETFs are investment vehicle that usually tracks some passive index. So, they are usually passive. When they are passive, uh, usually the trading strategy of the ETFs or investment strategy of the ETF is some were discussed and uh, written. So it means we can check what is the investment strategy and we can try to uh, figure out what the ETFs would be buying and we can front run the ETF. And there is a really, really uh, significant difference. So there are basically three types of the ETFs. First one is the ETFs or the three possible rebalancing strategies for the ETFs. It's called the sunshine trading, camouflaging when to trade and the camouflaging what to trade. So in the first case, the sunshine trading, the ETF tracks publicly available indexes that announce changes five days before the rebalance. So five days before the rebalance, we know what the ETF would be buying and selling. We can front run the ETF, uh, we can take the position before the ETF and uh, sell it after the rebalancing. Yeah, these ETFs are transparent, but it's very costly to invest into these ETFs because the stock prices tend to rise 67 basis points on average prior to rebalancing day. But that's really, really significant jump in the prices before the rebalancing and we can earn that difference in the prices when we figure out which stocks the ETF would buy. And or sell. That's the first possibility we can utilize the anticipated uh, ETF rebalances. The second way how we can uh, do our, some arbitrage trading with the ETFs is to use the ETF flows and you can try to predict subsequent uh, daily ETF performance. So once again, it is possible to get information or to calculate what are the flows into the ETFs. We can then calculate what is the unexpected ETF flow. So what is the ETF flow that is expected and what is the unexpected ETF flow, so extra flow into the ETF. And unexpected ETF flow is significantly and positively related to future ETF return on the next day. So when we do the decomposition, we can buy ETFs at the end of the day, for which we can expect that the price will increase and we can assure the ETFs for which we expect the price will decrease. There is significant performance, net of PDAS spreads and creation redemption costs around 14%. So with a sharp ratio around, around 1, which is really interesting. And the last one is we can explore the arbitrage movement effect in ETFs and in stocks. So what does it mean? So the creation and redemption uh, mechanism for ETFs has some repercussion on uh, underlying assets. So when the ETFs are holding the stocks, we can uh, calculate which stocks from the ETF are the most susceptible to arbitrage or are most sensitive to arbitrage and which stocks are the least sensitive to arbitrage trading based from ETFs. And what we can do, so the, what is the strategy proposal based on the findings? We can build a final long short portfolio. We can go along the high arbitrage sensitivity portfolio or high arbitrage sensitivity stocks. So the stocks that are mostly sensitive to arbitrage from the ETFs and we can show the stocks that are not so sensitive, so the low sensitivity portfolio. Once again, long short portfolio has an annualized alpha of nearly 8%. I hope that you liked it. All of the links to research papers and to our blog posts are in the description of the video, and I hope that you will join me in the next video. Thank you very much. Interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.